When I was a kid, I used to be in this amateur theatre group. I played, like, The Wall in Midsummer Night's Dream. I think I was a bunny in Wind in the Willows. Anyway, this film began when I remembered a story that I was told about a disastrous performance of Macbeth that this group had put on that was such a fiasco that it had made national headlines. Remembering it as an adult, it all just sounded a little bit too good to be true. So one day I decided to investigate. Hello. Hey, Simon, it's James Solden here. Oh, hello, James. What can I do for you? I was wondering what you might remember about a disastrous performance of Macbeth in Shoot Church, I think. The stag. Oh, gosh, song. yes. The famous story of the angry uh, lorry driver. But there were other things that happened as well. There was somebody who had to be taken to hospital. It wasn't the national press, I know that. I have a feeling there might be something lurking deep in my files. Oh, great. Anything you can unearth, that would be really useful. I'm trying to get hold of someone called Richard Dyke, Hilary Hyatt. Is that Barry Sindel? Speaking. Hello. I'm calling about a production of Macbeth in 1986 that I understand you were involved in. Yeah, I played the part of Macbeth in it. I, I remember it all too well. It was in the summer, I believe. I think it was the Daily Mail. It even got a mention in the New York Times. It was a night where just about every year that could have gone wrong did go wrong. What you really want to find out is where the bad luck originally started. You never mention the name, you always call it the Scottish play. You know, everybody in the world knows. If you put on the Scottish play, you're asking for trouble. I just called a second ago. I think I must have got cut off or something. Um... Yeah, I cut you off. I'm not interested. Oh, OK. Hello? What do you guys know about the curse of Macbeth? Please don't say it. Please don't say. It's yeah. a Scottish play. In acting circles, the play Macbeth is reputed to have been eternally cursed by a coven of 17th century witches. Nobody in shoot had done Shakespeare. But Philippa Mosley, who was the producer, was convinced that there was a potential audience, so bravely decided she was going to put on Macbeth as, as a first production. She was a very imposing presence. Have you seen photographs of her? I have not, no. Oh, you should get a photograph of her with her dark dark bob and her bright red lipstick. I'd spent days on the phone and the story kept getting stranger, so I decided to get as many of the cast as I could back together. The idea was, walk the whole thing through. Let's figure out what actually happened from the top. Banquo comes on at the beginning of the play and says, so foul and fair a day I have not seen. So foul and fair a day I have not seen. So wait, sorry, David Mosley, Philippa's husband, he's playing Banquo now, right? How's that happened? Somebody else was down to play Banquo, and they had to drop out. I think he probably feebly resisted, but um, he gave in. The part in this scene that goes wrong is, is as soon as we come on, the tree starts going down. OK. Right, so, so there's a tree here. Suddenly, David, he threw his cloak across a stage bush. He'd never done this before. Now, the bush was made of hardboard and, of course, clattered across the stage. If he'd been an experienced actor, he would have left it there, but he didn't. He picked up the stage bush, replaced it, repeated the action of throwing his cloak across the bush, and once again, it clattered to the ground. Goes down once, puts it on again, goes down twice, puts it down again, goes down the third time, and it was that point I leaned across him very quietly and said, they know it's a bloody cardboard tree now, David, leave it. OK, so I know what you might be thinking here. Essentially, all that's happened is a bush has fallen over. But stick with it. We were sort of doing our, ha -ha, you know, the witches bit. There's a huge old oak doors in the church, and there was an absolute thundering on the door, a huge amount of banging. Door flies open, and a guy in sick David accent shouts down, what did he shout on? Move these bloody cars! I can't get back! Can you hear them? Well, 
what's the guy look? What does he look like? What's the? He's a big stout lad. Yeah. With a castrol cap on. <laughs> a green shirt, he had a castrol pig cap, and he was not happy. Not he was happy not happy, man. and he was very loud, and the language was rich, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> so, not only did half the audience, but half the cast had to um, go and move their cars, which took a long while. So I rushed out in the pitch black. It was all pitch black, wasn't it? Yeah, we had to go around this way. Well, I didn't. I went this. I went that way. Sorry, within that, there was a key missing. I can't even remember where the key was for. The guy whose key got lost then got done by the police for obstructive parking. So it was one of the members of the cast who had lost one his of the key. Members. Cast, yes. Right. This lorry couldn't move until that went. He was ranting all the time. And so we were all left crawling around the graves here trying to find his keys. The key actually ended up in a bowl in the vestry. It was red because it, it was full of blood. But somehow the key had got in there. The key ended up in the bowl of, of bloody water somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me how, but that's where it was. <laughs> wow. The play then eventually resumed, but all was not done. As people were coming back, one of the witches flipped over a flagstone and hit her head on a grave. She staggered into great. the vestry at the back of the church and, um, you know, she was covered in blood. Actually, I, I didn't run, run, run into a gravestone. I ran into the corner of that bloody wall there, on the it? other side. Oh, right, one of these. Hit my head here. Oh, you hit your head there? Yeah, absolutely crashed into the corner of the building. Cut my head out and you can still see the scar. I actually went into Lady's Chapel and I went under the pews in a sort of fetus position. I'm not joking. And I said my lines because I thought, whatever else feels, Jean, you've got to know your lines. So they grabbed me and patched it out with a sticky plaster and covered it up with a bit of the wig and da 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 da. And we said, right, straight back on. So we went back on. And by this time, I could see something coming down Hillary's face. It's not gushing, but it's dribbling, like red stuff. I heard this clapping, and it was Philippa again, and she said, I'm sorry, we'll have to stop the play. Apparently, somebody in the audience had passed out. Well, this time, I just went under the bench and paid it, because I just thought, I can't cope with this, mate. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want anything to put me off my lines. So what happened to the lady, then? Did she go to hospital? I don't know what they'd done, but no. Mm. We had other things on our minds at the time. People by then were getting quite uptight. Banco, he appeared as a ghost at the wrong time. He came on as a ghost at the wrong point. Yes, he was in the wrong scene. People's whiskers started falling off. Somebody rang a bell when they shouldn't have done. Bowie was on stage with Lady Macbeth, and she got into such a state that she collapsed. Hyperventilated, is that what it is? I don't know. But she passed out, she collapsed in his arms. Oh, my God. It was when I was saying, malice, malice domestic, foreign levy, nothing, she said, I think I'm going to faint. Oh. Barry spoke her lines. Oh, you're telling me that? Yes, and da 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 da, -da as he dragged her off. Oh, horror, horror, horror! Tongue my heart cannot conceive, nor say name thee. The final scene is um, the good Macduff fights uh, Macbeth to the death with broadswords. Mm. We just heard this clattering and banging at the back of the stage. Now, by this time, the audience were petrified. And then all of a sudden, I heard Barry, and I, I probably won't thank him for saying it. He says, where's my fucking sword? So at this point, we come to the back, and the sword was meant to be here. So with, with somebody ready to hand it to me. It was a very, very long sword. It was about, oh, about six feet long. It was a, a genuine double-handed dueling sword. Do you think the audience heard him looking for the sword? Oh, yes, good God, they all have uh, shooted in, really. Banco was standing out there, trying to bluff his way through to keep the thing going, swinging his great big broadsword around. And eventually, Barry appeared with just a little fruit knife almost <laughs> to do battle with him. Oh, dear, it did make me laugh. Did it get any kind of reaction? Uh, yes, inevitably. People did find it amusing. But 
you have to continue to push on with this, and that's what we did. Well, Burnham would be come to Dunsinane, and thou opposed being of no woman born. Yet I will try the last. Before my body, I throw my warlike shield. Lay on, Macduff, and damn be he. The first cries, hold, enough. <laughs> How do you remember your death happening, Barry? Was it very dramatic? Uh, yeah, it's basically, you know, I stabbed and, um, and then I end up over the back there. Uh, you know, it's as though they've taken the body off. That was it. I'm not staying here for long. <laughs> but anyway, we finished it. Uh, and Barry and I went and, uh, who else was it? Uh, the, the good McGuff. <laughs> went back to Barry's house and we drank a bottle of scotch and that was that. Quite an eventful evening. Oh yeah, it was great fun. But of course, there was somebody in the audience who was doing a review. He sent it up to the... I think it was a Daily Mail. Philippa was furious that the press had got hold of it because she was so professional and she just thought it made us a laughing stock, which I suppose you just sometimes you just have to laugh because <laughs> it was ridiculous. So what was the effect of the press coverage? It was oh. great box office. It yeah, the, the, yeah. Church, the yeah. church was yeah. full yeah. every night yeah. from yeah. the, and the, the people other four queuing, nights. People Come on, doesn't it every day you get, get into tickets. the sun, the mirror, yeah. New York <laughs> Times, <laughs> private eye. <laughs> and the people couldn't get tickets. When we, when we started with this performance, Philippa was a little concerned about whether it would really work in terms yes. of people turning up. Mm. And after that one night, she could have filled the place over and over again. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like the curse kind of worked out quite well for Philippa and for Stag. It was amazing, really, for such an isolated area. I didn't give it very long, personally, myself, but I'm a bit of a pessimist. In a way, it's due to her that Shoot Church is still a church because it was very much up for closure then, and she fought to keep it open because she said it was such an ideal place to put on her plays. So, there it is. That's the Scottish play. It's a little bit hazy on the details, but then I don't know if that really matters. I set out to deconstruct this story, but I sort of ended up just participating in it and passing it on. And I think that means something. At least I hope it does. <laughs> if it doesn't, I've wasted a lot of time. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his out upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing.